that's neither here nor there. Graham Elwood took to Twitter for quite a lengthy uh, list of reasons why he stopped working. Jimmy, uh, do you want to read them, Gavin, or do you want me to? Uh, I can read them. And and by the way, Zach, he did not take to Twitter. He took to X. Come on, man. <laughs> can you believe they actually did that shit? What a ridiculous, ridiculous thing to do. I'm so sorry, but probably the dumbest branding decision in the history of companies. Like someone was saying uh, the only comparable example of a stupid rebrand was like when they tried to make Coke. New Coke. Coke. Yeah. Right. But I was like, at least they left Coke in the title. Well, imagine if they had just changed Coke to like the letter K. Like and pop open a a crisp k in the morning like what so anyway excuse me uh the the platform formerly known as twitter graham elwood has taken to give uh i don't know a dozen reasons why he doesn't uh, uh want to work with jimmy door anymore pretty crazy but yeah let's just fire these guys up yeah so as you guys probably remember we covered graham elwood's recent rant against jimmy door here on the Vanguard, and, and that was a, a pretty fucking wild rant, you guys. We've covered Graham venting about Jimmy Dore a couple times in the past, uh, but this was easily the most intense calling out we've seen yet. Let's very quickly revisit the gloriousness. Shout out to High Progressive, by the way, for putting together this funny little 20-second edit on Twitter. Just in case anyone's not familiar with what I'm talking about, let's quickly watch this again. The demonetization. And then all this cunt bullshit with that fucking alcoholic motherfucker, Jimmy Dore, that he's an alcoholic fuckbag who needs his ass kicked. And I know where both of his houses are. So then there's that. And then, oh, by the way, my alcoholic union's in a fucker, Jimmy Dore, that he's an alcoholic fuckbag who needs his ass kicked. <laughs> houses are so that <laughs> shout out to lee camp shout out to lee camp and graham elwood <laughs> um but yeah that, that was the the pretty unhinged rant from graham elwood going after jimmy and his alcoholism in the process um but now we have some more substantive reasons graham decided to clarify just what his beef is with jimmy Dore outside of the reasons we already heard listed in that video he says reasons i stopped working with jimmy Dore. one Defended Rittenhouse, Jimmy Dore quoted Blue Lives Matter talking points on air. 100% true, by the way. Zach and I also, you know, were disgusted by that. That was one of the first times, or not one of the first times, but one of the, you know, final nails in the Jimmy Dore coffin as far as his credibility was concerned in my eyes. So that was a huge red flag. And I do not blame Graham for, you know, deciding to stop working for Jimmy after hearing that. Um, we good? Sorry, I just thought I heard a no. Okay, gotcha. Um, Number two, COVID minimizing and cherry picking stats. 100% also great reason to stop working for Jimmy Dore. Number three, out of control alcoholism and drug abuse. Once again, sounds like a valid reason to stop working with someone. We can't speak to Jimmy's situation, but if that's true, if he was truly abusing drugs and alcohol uh, you know, in the workplace and making that an issue for his other people, you know, people working with him, his work, his employees, um, then that's absolutely a valid reason not to work for someone. Just because you're working for someone does not mean you should have to tolerate um, their drunken, assholeish behavior. A hundred percent. And I speculated yesterday that there was a reason that there was so much like vitriol and like so much animosity when he, you know, like because yeah, you could crack jokes at being a, a Jimmy being a drunk piece of shit, and I do it. It's it's low hanging fruit, but sometimes it's there, and you go for it, right? But the vitriol, the like extreme animosity, I was like, oh, they used to fucking drink and party together. I can tell that fucking immediately. It's like, oh, there's a kid, there, you know. I I, I feel like he pro I feel like Graham probably knew Jimmy back in the day when he before he was in recovery, right? And then to just still watch, all, I, I I that's the energy that I got because later on Graham does go on and talk about how he's in a twelve step program, which I could fucking tell you a mile away again based on how he talked about that situation. Yep. Um, so that's why it's a very tender subject, I would imagine, you know, and a lot of people are like in the chat, you know, talking about like alcoholism, you know, it's a, it's a disease, it's an illness, it, it needs treatment. I know that I guarantee you Graham knows that, uh, you know, it's, it's a battle that he fights fucking every day. I guarantee you, uh, but I, you could, that, that would just provide some more context and, 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 you know, he'll give it from himself. Uh, but like, you know, him deciding he's not going to put up with that anymore is, is probably better for his own health. You know, uh, it's not good for your recovery to be around a manipulative, abusive person person that's you know drinking but i uh, you know uh he, since he went so fucking hard in the paint and ever and i i was like well i think that everybody needs to know like a little bit more of the context of why this is going on 
Right, right. Um, so number four, verbal abuse of staff. Whew, that checks out. Uh, yelling at me when I was hired as live show producer. Interesting. No, no surprises there. He yells at Kurt Metzger on air all the time. And his own wife. So yeah, and definitely yeah, no surprises. Right. Um, yeah, I, I just can't imagine if you started fucking yelling at me for basically any reason <laughs> on air. Like out of like, shut the fuck like, shut I just, up. I was about to make guys always stealing my fucking thunder. I swear to God, I'm gonna burn this place off. Oh, fucking clown quest my martini. Day in the life of Jimmy Dore sidekick. Graham goes on to say, didn't defend me. Jimmy did not defend him when the son of a man who worked for Clinton smears me on JDS. So he's talking about Max Blumenthal. If anyone's not familiar, Max Blumenthal is the son of Sidney Blumenthal. Um, anyway, so Max Blumenthal dissed Graham Elwood on the Jimmy Dore show. And Jimmy basically just laughed instead of defending his friend and former co-host, which is a shitty thing to do. Even if you do genuinely disagree with your friend, um, if someone called Zach a fucking fascist on my show and he wasn't here, I would say, hey, Zach's not a fascist. Come on. <laughs> you know, we can we can disagree with my friend Zach, but don't call him a fucking fascist. That's a low blow and obviously not true. And that's exactly what Max Blumenthal did to Graham Elwood. So I do understand why, you know, Graham would be a, a little bit pissed about that to just hear Jimmy laugh along instead of defending him and being like, no, OK, you know, I don't agree with Graham on the vaccine but obviously he's not in favor of the vaccine because he's a totalitarian fucking fascist it's because he wants to be safe and he wants everyone else to be safe um obviously that's the charitable explanation and to assume otherwise or to like assign some sort of a authoritarian instinct to graham's support of the vaccine is just a shitty thing to say about someone who like i said was your friend and your fucking co-host and who defended you multiple times as graham said um, he defended Jimmy Dore numerous times and he called out Jank, which apparently cost him work at TYT, but he did because it was the right thing to do. Well, that's, I mean, that's Jimmy's MO, right? Like, you know, he, it's very Trumpy and it's like, I expect you to go to the absolute mattresses for me, uh, at the slightest infraction that somebody would, you know, or the slightest, you know, um, uh, rude comment or like any kind of criticism at all, but yet he would never ever fall on the sword, uh, for one of his homies. So absolutely. Um, and then Graham goes back on even further, uh, which, it, you know, it, it just keeps ramping up, guys. Uh, this is this is also something that we've been talking about a lot. The climate denial videos uh, absolutely deranged and inexcusable. 100 percent. Jimmy's climate denier arc has also recently begun. And Graham seems to be pretty upset about that, too. Recent climate denial videos. Every time I did Jimmy Dore show, I was given articles ahead of the show, except when we debated. Then I was blindsided. Weasel move. So that's pretty crazy. Um, when I encouraged him to start Amazon boycott, he didn't want to give up the convenience of online shopping. LOL. That's pretty funny. Um, and honestly, kind of relatable. Not, <laughs> not going to lie. Sometimes I get things on Amazon, two day shipping, you know what I'm saying? But uh, what, if we had a, a, the ability to boycott Amazon, like, I mean, come on. Like, it's absolutely nobody's saying that you can't buy Amazon ever, but like, I mean, yeah, absolutely ridiculous that you would use that as a valid reason to not like use your million subs as a, a boycott Amazon as you're like kind of trying to position yourself as the like super pro Amazon labor guy. Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, I'm mostly I was kidding. I did recently cancel my Amazon Prime subscription. So now I really only use it if there's like no other option. I try to avoid it at all costs. Um, so I was mostly joking about that one being relatable, but still, uh, there's, there's Graham's reasons. He has a couple more. I was proud to be a part of the Jimmy Dore show and it's progressive left anti-war message. As the show grew, it became more about Jimmy's alcohol fueled ego and less about making the world a better place. Growing up in an alcoholic home and being in a 12 step recovery for 15 years means I won't tolerate toxic behavior. Sometimes I don't express this in the best way, but I'm always going to be honest. I've never lied to my audience, even and especially when I'm angry, which is something I actually do really admire about Graham Elwood, guys. There's so many fucking phonies in this space. There really are people that just refuse to speak their mind because they know that they're going to get a bunch of deranged people in their comments and, you know, Jimmy, for example, in this case, is going to send his flying monkeys after you and and, and try to uh, make you seem like you're just 
fucking bitter because you're less famous than he is or whatever. But let's be honest, guys. These are serious, serious red flags for any boss. And as lefties, as pro-worker socialists, we should be concerned about uh, a working environment if it's really this bad, no matter what environment it is. And if Jimmy Dore is the boss, then we should call him out just like any other boss. This is obviously an unacceptable kind of workplace to foster. Um, yelling at your staff, whether you're an alcoholic or not, is obviously abusive. Um, and, and everything else here just really paints the picture of Jimmy Dore that affirms what Zach and I have kind of been inferring about him for a long time, that he's an out of control alcoholic that he treats people like shit that he's a total narcissist that he cherry picks information to make his bullshit points that he's not actually interested in making the world a better place or engaging with those whom he disagrees with on honest terms etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean it's basically just confirmation of everything we've been telling you guys for a long time but it is nice to hear it from someone that knew this guy for a long time that traveled around the country and did the show together i mean this guy has the kind of insight into jimmy that zach and i simply don't have and you know even if you don't care about jimmy Dore being a, a piece of shit we've we've all known that for a long time that jimmy's a narcissist he even admits that he's a narcissist we've heard many stories about him being a dick him being rude etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's, it's really not that surprising to hear that jimmy is an out of control alcoholic who verbally abuses his staff and again even if you don't care about that maybe you're just like you know i don't really give a fuck if jimmy Dore is a nice guy or not the reason i like his show is for the substance because i agree with him well graham listed some reasons in the substance category as well to be wary. And I think he's totally, it's totally accurate to point out the COVID minimizing the defense of uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, the blue lives matter talking points, which were regurgitated on the Jimmy Dore show, the climate denialism. I mean, these are all substantive reasons to jump off the Jimmy Dore ship. If for some reason you're still on board, um, they go far beyond his personal bad behavior, which you can decide for yourself, whether or not that's something you care about. It might not be. And you know, to be fair, to an extent, I can understand that. You know, most people come to their political commentators to hear political commentary, not because, oh, this is such a great, nice person. A lot of people don't care. And, and I can understand that. I, I care. You know, I care about workers' rights, but maybe you don't. And maybe you just care about the substance and what Jimmy Dore actually preaches. And in that case, well, there's a lot of reasons here to distance yourself as well. Yep, a hundred percent. For him to be the kind of guy that wants to lecture other people about how they run their organizations is, I think, the crux of it here. And look, you know, it, it, you know, I, I mean, a lot of people are, are in the chat. There's a lot of discourse about, like, you know, his uh, substance abuse. Look, I, uh, you know, I, I believe everybody, like, you know, if you have a problem with that, you should try and get help and, and reach recovery and all that kind of uh, stuff. But if he wasn't being an absolute fuckhead. Uh, to all the people that work for him, I would probably keep my mouth shut about it. I wouldn't fucking feel the need to, you know, you know, bring that up. Like th that is something that you, you know, you battle personally. Th look, there are a lot of people in this world who are fucking alcoholics, man. Uh, but it's not an excuse to fucking treat people like shit. And that's where people, you, that's where you have to draw the line. It's like, look, you know, if uh, you know, it's it's a selfish, it it's a, it it is a. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it typically it breeds selfishness. I'm not going to be fucking, you know, uh, I'm not going to mince my words about that. I, I, you know, I've, I have, uh, I've had my run-ins with, uh, you know, people while they're drinking before, and typically they're not making the best calls. All right. They're not, uh, you know, thinking of others. Uh, so it does, it becomes really easy to build up a lot of animosity and vitriol towards these people because they will just treat you like absolute fucking shit and like, it doesn't matter. And then go back and neck the bottle. Right. That's where the animosity that somebody like Graham is coming from. And if you have a personal relationship with somebody and then you watch them fucking destroy themselves, that also creates more animosity. And I imagine it also is frustrating for him to be the kind of guy, uh, you know, that went through all of the like, you know, devastating hardship of recovery and then like, you know, still had to get treated like shit. You know, like he was the like, you know, I, I'm at, you know, and again, I'm not here to try and psychoanalyze the guy. But if, you, had, you know, he grew up in a house where he was treated like shit by drunk people and then you find yourself as a grown man working for a drunk guy. Yeah, it's going to fuck with you mentally. You're going to feel like you're a little boy again. And, I, you know, I imagine that created some shit for him. So I'm glad that he doesn't work there anymore.